Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. This is the Sunday show where I take you through five of my very best sold sales items and I also bring on a guest. It's a new format. I'm enjoying the process. I'm bringing on a guest every single week and we just basically have a bit of a chat about what items sold best for us on eBay. This week, I've got Steve who goes by Resale Dojo on Instagram and on YouTube. But guys, I'm very excited about this because he is my very first international guest residing out of Phoenix, Arizona over there in the USA. So I'm very, very pumped to get him on the show today. I've got a lot of questions for him. And he's also got some very, very cool sales items as well. I did take a peek before we did the pre-record. So looking forward to diving into this one, guys. Hopefully you're excited about it. I'll also take you through my weekly sales numbers at the end. But let's dive into the interview that I have with Steve. All right, guys, very, very excited about today's episode. We've got Steve, Resale Dojo, out of Arizona in the USA. Steve, my first international guest. Welcome to the <laughs> channel, mate. How are you? Oh, thanks for having me. It's an honor. Yeah, dude. I know. I really do appreciate you jumping on. I've been watching your videos uh, for a while now, which is always part of these Sunday episodes to get fellow resellers on. Predominantly those that are on YouTube, and you're doing some really great things. Um, give me the give me the quick 60-second breakdown of... Uh, of your channel, your reselling journey, uh, sort of how you've got to uh, to be here today. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I got a channel, uh, Resale Dojo. Um, mm -hmm. On it, I upload probably like two to three days a week on there, all reselling content. Um, it became real popular, um, or at least semi-popular because of my DVD series on there, which I put probably about one DVD video out uh, each week uh, when it comes to at least some type of Bolo DVD that you should look for, or some type of Bolo series you should be looking for as well. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's been great. It's uh, been a fun journey just making a channel uh, just because it helped me uh, eliminate some of the boredom, <laughs> just yeah. constantly sourcing, uh, listing, cleaning, all that type of stuff. And allowed me to at least share my knowledge and uh, it brought me into a community, which has been fantastic because I, I've watched a ton of reselling videos and uh, those have really helped me grow my business. And I wanted to at least share some of my knowledge back to the community as well and and do something creative in at the same time. Obviously, uh, Steve's YouTube channel details down the bottom there, Resale Dojo. I pulled up the channel just before. Um, definitely go and check it out. Give him a sub. You broke the 1,000 subs as well. So you're doing, mm -hmm. I, I said before, before we went live, that one of the things that I really like about your channel is obviously you've, you've niched yourself down into the reseller category. DVDs, you're the king of DVDs. So anyone mm -hmm. out there looking to try and sell a DVD, obviously go on to, uh, to Steve's channel and check out his video series. Um, but you're very, very consistent with your uploading. That's probably mm -hmm. been the biggest thing that I've been impressed about your channel. Um, so obviously you've got a passion for the reselling side of things, but you also clearly have a passion for the for the YouTube side of things as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I love making the videos. Um, I've I've really gotten into the editing. Like that's the thing. Like I try now to think of like what is like one new thing I could try out every week um, yep. in a video, and it may just be like some little tweak that I make in there. But I'm like, okay, I learned something new. And uh, it's it makes it makes the grind of it uh, exciting because you'll be making a video, be like, oh, I want to try something here, and then you'll yeah. have to figure out how to do that <laughs> as well. Yeah. So uh, it's it's just fun, just trying to be a little creative there. Now, oh, look, I completely agree. You're, I always say you're always learning and reselling. You're always learning on YouTube as well. There's mm -hmm. there's so much to learn, and um, I, I have a real passion for the editing side of things as well. I think you have to be if you keep punching out videos, yeah, you know, consistently mm -hmm. every. Uh, you know, second day almost. So, yep. <laughs> um, mate, awesome stuff. Really, really cool to get you on the channel. I'm pumped for today. We're going to do what we always do on the Sunday show, and that is five of my sales, five of your sales. We're going to have a really quick chat about them all. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully there's some bolos in there for those that are watching out there to uh, to go out and find themselves. So mm -hmm. I'll, um, I'll kick things off. I okay. will cool. throw in, let's see, add this to the stream. Here we go. First item up for myself here, Geronimo Stilton. This is a book series. Um, now, this was actually purchased in a, a trip to the thrift episode a couple of weeks ago now. I can't remember the exact sales cycle on it. It didn't hang around for too long, which was good. But this is a very, very good series, a good author, um, Geronimo Stilton. This was the Kingdom of Fantasy hardcover books. Um, it wasn't a, a full set. I don't exactly know how many books are, are in the entire set, but this was a bit of a mixture between two different series. Um I did get the full price there though of uh, of ninety dollars, which I was pretty excited about. I paid just a dollar for these books. So I'm only eight dollars in, and I've been able to That's sell them awesome. for ninety. Yeah, so 
you know, the, everyone talks about it, obviously, with the books and, and even the DVDs with some of your series, yeah. I guess. Um, you know, selling them in bulk is, is obviously the best way to do it. So really, really pumped to find the hardcover Geronimo Stilton's. If you, if you find any sort of series in, in that author, uh, you're generally going to go on to do okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love bundling media, whether it's books or DVDs or whatever, even VHS tapes. Yeah. You can find, like, I'll find like Pokemon tapes and put them all in a bundle and and they'll move. Yep. Yeah, it's it's a great way to bring out your average sales price um, for a low cost, especially when it comes to media, because usually you find them for like a buck or 50 cents or two bucks. It's super cheap to find each of them and you could, you know, make one big solid sale out of it. Your first one up here. What do we got? All right. This one, since I am the king of DVDs, I needed to at least have one DVD in here and I wanted to kick it off with this one. This Love one it. I found a little over a week ago. And when I listed it, it sold in less than 12 hours <laughs> wow. when it came to it. And the reason I picked this up was because it's Rambo is a cartoon. And I've never seen this before. And I thought like, it's so weird to have what would have been a rated R movie made into a cartoon. So I'm like, that's yeah. got to be a little rare right there. Yeah. So uh, I found this one for a dollar at the thrift store and I scanned it. And I thought originally I could get maybe like 20 to 25. And I just put it and I listed up, listed up at 49.95 with uh, I always have like, I always run a 10% sale on anything over 20 bucks in my store for mm -hmm. dvds so it's like a little fake sale going on there and yeah someone bought it and it got shipped through the global shipping program uh within 12 hours so <laughs> wow a quick little sale yeah and then, uh, even even just the print on the front is yeah it gets you interested as well it just looks like yeah. a pretty cool print the um in your title there the the oop can you tell the the viewers about what that refers to and what why that i guess is pretty important yeah, that's uh, out of print. So if you, uh, f especially for DVDs, like the ones that sell really well, they're not in, they're not in circulation or they're not being made anymore, um, which is, you know, they're not being printed anymore. Um, and they're probably not on a streaming service anywhere that you could find them as well. And so that's what will raise the prices of those DVDs for you. Yep. And I guess, working out you know when you're looking at a dvd is this an out of print or is it not on first first look in the op shop or the thrift mm -hmm. store i guess you've really got to utilize you know apps like ebay to just see yep. if it is an out of print just based on what you're seeing on the comps right mm -hmm. yeah there's yeah no, there's I, no I, marking yeah yeah I'll, I'll i'll search ebay i'll search amazon i'll do google search on them as well to see if i can find anything uh around that that item epic there's just money in dvds yeah. Uh, I, I, like the, the timeliness of being able to get you on this week has been amazing because I did put out a video on Tuesday around the bulk purchase of about 500 mm -hmm. DVDs um, to try and for those that haven't watched that video, definitely go and check it out. But ultimately, I, I wanted to have time off over the next couple of weeks with some mates coming over. And uh, I, I thought the best way to do it, like your process as well, is to what can you list really, really quickly? And mm -hmm. for me, it was DVDs, video games, obviously, as well. But the other side of things was if you want to um, list something really quickly, you also don't want to be buying volume of say 500 items and having to pay a really high cost of good. Mm -hmm. So it, it just made the most sense for me to, to buy the DVDs, get them listed really quickly at a very cheap price and just take a bit of a gamble on a, on a Facebook marketplace, you know, almost like a wholesale purchase of 500 mm -hmm. you know, used DVDs. So um, this one that I've got here, my second item is one of those DVDs. So a bit of an update on, on all of that is, this Scarlet and the Black DVD, Region 4, plays in Australia. It literally was like new. There was nothing wrong with the disc itself. Um, I had never heard of this movie. I don't think I'd ever heard of the actors that were in this movie. Um, it comped at the 1950 that I, I listed the item for, but it actually sold to somebody in Ireland. So this one's – I do a bulk uh, $30 rate for, for international postage. So I've actually made about $10. Um additional cost so it's ended up selling for about 28 dollars this dvd and mm -hmm. uh i bought it on average out of that 500 dvd haul for 68 cents so that's a great really point. really kind of <laughs> big return on one item i've still got another 499 to sell but um overall this week in the four days since i bought that haul i've been able to sell four of those dvds and i've listed probably about maybe 40 or 50 of them so mm -hmm. about a 10 percent sell through off what i've listed 
And so far about $81 in sales of actual DVD plus postage on top. So I paid $350 for that haul and I've been able to already recoup about 80 bucks back in just a couple of days. So yeah, this one obviously awesome. being the, the absolute best of the bunch, um, Scarlet mm -hmm. and the Black, which I, I thought was pretty cool to get pretty early on. So within a couple of hours, this one as well. That's awesome. I've never seen this one myself either. And I definitely would have, this would have been one that I would have looked at because anything that's like a weird, that's not a common name DVD, I will always yep. check. And this one especially looks like it's from like 60s, 70s timeframe. Uh, those ones seem to do really well. Yeah, I've noticed that out of the because what I'm what I'm doing my my process with this is I'm going through every single one. I'm not listing every single one because I'll ultimately probably wholesale back on marketplace all the ones mm -hmm. that are worth three to four dollars. Um, yep. Ones like this, or, or what I'm doing is anything that's worth ten dollars or more um, is what I'm going ahead and obviously listing up, and the rest I'm kind of putting to the side. So it's kind of been fun. It's a bit of a lottery ticket scenario where you're kind <laughs> of just scanning every single one for hours on end to try and work out what the good ones are, but. Yep. Fortunately, there's been a few in there, which is uh, which has been a good thing. Your yeah. next one up, mate. What do we got? What do we got here? Yeah, I got one? this. This one is a rare one for me. This is one of the hard goods that I found. I think I got this one for like eight or ten bucks at the thrift store. Um, yeah. It was new open box, and yep. it's a uh, drywall texture spray gun. So everything in there was still was sealed and everything. It just had the open box, and I'm not sure if it had originally had any type of plastic around it or not. Yeah. Um, but this one, I think I had for maybe two months and I just sat and waited for my price. I think I threw out an offer, maybe at like 120 or 110 to someone, like a few people, few watchers didn't get bites. And then I just waited on it since I had so little into it. And this, it's just one of those rare ones, um, that I don't think I'll ever find this one again, <laughs> mm. <laughs> but I know like to look for like any like new inbox tools or seal tools or like just anything like that. Like, you know, any tangible goods that people are going to be using day in and day out. Um, yep. Those are the ones that I'll like, if it's in box, I'll always check them. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, you're right. This isn't probably something that's on your hit list every single time you go into a thrift store. Right. But mm -hmm. you've got the, the idea of what you're looking for, brand new box tool, sort of a category. And mm -hmm. this has kind of fit the bill. And then it's obviously comped out pretty well for you as well. So yep. um, yeah, that's definitely, it would be an out of the box one for me too. I don't do the tools too much myself, <laughs> but uh, I mean, 130, what did you say you paid for it? Ten, eight or 10 bucks for it eight or 10 into 130 yeah. and yeah geez yeah so that's about 80 dollars on profit when you take it all out hey mm -hmm. incredible um i've got one that i look uh, we had um uh brad dyer of a flipper on last week's episode for those yeah, who were tuning awesome. in and it, yeah he's he's big on toys and and this was actually one that i had already had purchased uh, a few months before it, it hasn't sat up for ages probably about eight weeks actually in the end um, a fifty nine ninety nine for a fifty centimeter Batman figure that I found in the thrift for about, I think it was about four or five dollars that I ended up paying for it. But the comps immediately told me that I could get around that sixty dollar price. Um, he was he was in awesome condition as well. He's a twenty fifteen toy, but he's adjustable in the sense of his arms and his legs move. I guess that that would be really his only feature. He doesn't talk or anything like that. Um, but he's got the the Jack specific. Uh, and the best way, as as Brad touched on last week, the best way to kind of um, work out what your toy is actually worth or what toy you actually have is mm -hmm. to just check the underneath and generally on the foot um, or whatever whatever toy you have, there's somewhere where it will have the brand mm -hmm. um, and obviously the year as well. So this one being a Jack specific uh, 2015 toy, uh, those sort of matched up on eBay with the other toys that were around that sort of vintage um, to be around this $60 price point and obviously being a, a slightly larger toy in 50 centimetres, um, you know, I, I thought this was a, I don't sell toys for that that sort of a price. So I was actually pretty happy to see this one come through. Um, and the other one as well with the the sense of the packaging, I know a lot of people out there, you know, are really curious, oh, how do you how do you package and send this on, you know, this sort of thing out? And mm -hmm. for me, it's just a really, really hard bubble wrap. I give it a really good bubble wrap so it doesn't move. And, and to be honest, I am from there just putting it into a satchel um, so this one for me actually shipped for about $10 on a medium oh, yeah. satchel. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it got to the buyer fine, no no dramas at all. So yeah, I was really happy to see that one come through a little earlier this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, toys, toys are rare for me. Like um, I don't go out of the way to find them, but if they're like in a section 
or they just stick out, then I'll look at them. And yeah, it's 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 always a rare. And the big ones too, right? Like yeah, like this guy was like ten times the size of any other toy in there. So I'm like, this has got to be worth something. And then uh, (laughs) sure enough, it's it's worth about sixty with a four or four or five dollar tag on it. So I thought that was pretty cool. So wow. here I got a uh, Roy Clark's uh, last of the summer wine. It's nine DVD sets. And I think each of them have like two to four DVDs in there. Uh, wow. $225 state. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. This is the, this is the thing about DVDs. When you hit on them, you hit big. Yeah, uh, when it, goodness. When it, I hope there's a few of them in my wholesale stack that I've got over here. Yeah. <laughs> you better check that. Check the bottom <laughs> of those boxes. <laughs> yeah. But this one, I think I had eleven dollars into it after everything. They paid like a, it was one where they didn't price them up. I got them like for a dollar twenty nine for each of them. It was like it depends on the store. Some stores would have priced at like four to six bucks here. Other ones will price it like two or one dollar for it, depending on who you have the pricer. So I got yep. lucky on the pricing to to keep it really low. But even if they were higher up, I still would have paid up for them just because they're super rare here in the U.S. Uh, to find any of these. So um, yeah. I knew I could eventually wait it out. I think I waited about a, only a month to wow. to find the right buyer on it. Um, so some of the ones, you know, you, you have to wait for the right buyer, uh, especially when it comes to like uh, BBC or Acorn sets uh, here in the US. Um, but there are a lot of buyers for those um, over here. That is an unbelievable sale price, $225. <laughs> I, I did have you on the show um, for your Godzilla DVD, I think it was as well, a few weeks back. Yeah. Um, yep. What? How much did that one sell for again on memory? Uh, the, the the Blu-ray one, I think it was that you had where it was, it was. Uh, I think it was 175. 175. But like, these numbers are just absolutely <laughs> madness. I'm sure there's people watching this just shaking their head going, how the hell can these DVDs be worth that yeah. much? I mean, I, that was certainly myself you know, a few months ago when I, I first started. Um, but and then watching your videos as well, I'm like, I've never found something as good as this myself. But geez, I'll tell you what, I'm on the lookout for them now because I, kn- I know now that they are out there. Yeah, that's, uh, that's incredible. Back into <laughs> into my domain, um, the shoes. I'm a, I'm a nice. big shoe seller. Absolutely love selling my shoes. I just find that they sell through very, very quick for me. I've picked one out that did sell internationally, which made me a couple of extra dollars. Um, actually, oh, to be honest, not really. I put thirty dollars worth of shipping on this. Went over to your part of the world in the in the United States, and uh, nice. I got a sixty five dollars sale price plus the thirty dollars international for these Supras. So, Supra, you let me know because it's going over to your neck of the woods. Is that a brand that you know of, and and a brand that you like to pick up yourself? I don't even. I've never heard of it. So wow. I don't, I don't know if it's just from your neck of the woods, and we don't have it over here. Um, yeah. That's because it's, it's, a, it's, it's ultimately a, a skateboarding shoe. And, and I know that the skateboarding culture is pretty much established over there in the US. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, this being a, yeah, I, I personally know having having seen the shoe back when I was sort of in school days that um, they were quite popular over here. Um, mm-hmm. And I just kind of assumed that because of the skateboarding culture over there, it would have been you know pretty common um, for somebody to pick up. And yeah. regardless, somebody has uh, over there, uh, you know, bought these for the $30 post and, um I only bought these for about $5. I'm very, very fortunate over here on the Gold Coast where I'm from to find shoes at a very low cost compared to others in Australia. Um, I, I, I've gone to you know Sydney and uh, the pricing in Sydney for these sort of shoes would be about $30 or $40, not even kidding, um, with the way they do their pricing over there. So wow. I, I know that my my part of the world here on the coast is actually pretty good for, uh, for picking up shoes and um, I'm really trying to capitalise on that. So... Mm-hmm. Um, to sell these for 65, very good condition. I think I profited in the end about, oh, I think it was about $45 in the end. So mm-hmm. slightly higher than my, my normal average from a, a shoe sell. That's awesome. All right. I had to do a video game system. Nice. <laughs> nice. I, 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 I didn't have any games that went for a crazy price over the last week, but I did have my first PlayStation 4 that I found in the wild. Wow. Uh, and this one was at the thrift store that I found this at, and I got it for 40 bucks. It didn't okay. have a c- controller at all, but it had the power cord. Fortunately enough, I had a bunch of PS4 controllers that I found over the last few months that I haven't been able to test out until I found a console. <laughs> so I was able <laughs> to test the console and those controllers all at the same time. Even um, better. But I kept the controllers because I'm like, eventually I'll find another 
console for cheap that I'll keep for myself. But I, I decided to to sell this one um, just because I figured the price will go down once the PS5s become pretty common out there. Um, so I made sure that I I flipped this one as soon as I yeah. could. And it went in like like three days, something like that. It was super quick. Wow. Yeah. And console only. Yeah, console only price. just with a power cord. Yeah. Was there ever a, a thought to add in a few extra bits and pieces that you had lying around or? I thought I may put a controller in, but I just kept the controller for myself. Um, Didn't need to, obviously. Yeah, it was a nice enough. I, I've, it, it was a nice enough price where this one was at. And I wanted to make sure I at least had a decent controller to test any future ones um, yep. down the line. Yeah. No, it's a it's an unbelievable sale. Geez, you've had a good week. Have a look at these ones that you're throwing at us. This is the <laughs> this is the Rolls Royce of what sold. That's for sure. Unreal. Um, I've got my last item here, and I'm back selling furniture, Steve. This has been a, a little while for me since. This I've, is awesome. Um, yeah, I've I've. Long story short, I've had the van stolen a, a few months ago, and and I need the van to buy furniture to sell. And uh, mm -hmm. I've been out of the game. And to be honest with you, I, uh, I I've I've been I've, I've had the van, the new van that I've purchased for the last uh, probably about four weeks now. And everyone said, "Oh, brilliant, Matt! You're going to be back selling furniture." And it, it hasn't been an easy transition to get away from eBay and the processes that I've put into place since I've had the van stolen to to mm -hmm. get back into traveling around buying furniture and then flipping it. But um, I did have this one, and this is the first uh, sale that I finally had back in the furniture game. Oh, I only paid twenty dollars. This is just a stock photo of a auction website of the item that I ended up selling. It's um, it was a Facebook Marketplace sale. Obviously, I, I don't, I can't do you know sales of furniture any other way. But I deleted mm -hmm. the listing, so you're gonna you're gonna have to just believe me on this one. <laughs> I trust you. Um, yeah, you trust me. That's good. It's actually one that. Anyone that's watched my channel for a fair period would go, Matt, I've seen you sell. This is like the only piece of furniture you sell. And uh, yeah. that, that pretty much correct because I do see them almost every single day on Facebook Marketplace. It's the Medang Entertainment Unit out of a range of uh, a, a superstore here that is very, very common yet very, very popular. Um, they go for about $600 in brand new condition. And, and uh -huh. I, I bought this exact one for 20 bucks locally. So, you know, for me, knowing that this item just sells for 150 in a heartbeat on Facebook, mm -hmm. um, back in the furniture game, I, I just went around and picked this one up for 20 bucks, gave it a quick clean. And I ended up selling it because there were a few marks on it. I went down to 125 mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and sold it for 125 within the space of about 12 hours. You know what? I actually had it in the house for about a week and I didn't do anything with it. I didn't clean it. <laughs> I didn't list it. It was like I was up here in my in my office, you know, getting these eBay listings done, and it was just forever sitting down there. And sure enough, I finally got off my bum and uh, gave it a clean and a list, and and it sells literally in twelve hours. So I'll uh, I'll probably have to get back into doing the furniture because it just it just sells so well. That's a death pile that you don't want. You don't want a death pile <laughs> of furniture because it. Just yeah, you're right up your Look, with furniture, I'm 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 not a, a hoarder of furniture. It'll be I buy one, I wait for it to sell, I buy the next one. Um, yep. And when I was really going hard on my furniture, I was probably doing about three pieces a week, um, and that was literally buying in in that week and having a sell through of about two days on average, mm -hmm. and, and getting through about two to three of them by the time the week ended. So. You know, I was doing 500 bucks in furniture pretty comfortably, you know, buying these for roughly $50, selling them for roughly $150 on average. Um, it's for anyone out there that that has the opportunity or the means to be able to do it, um, just one piece of furniture at a time. My goodness, on Facebook Marketplace, it's probably the best item to be able to sell on there. Your awesome. last one up. It's a monster. Yeah. Yeah, this one. This one I found at the thrift store as well. This is the same thrift store I found a PS4 um ad as well but this one i had i think three weeks listed um but it, it came in a bundle so this is like uh i think it's a retired version of the sennheiser um headphones and so i was like one of the only ones i had it the only other one that had it listed he had just the headphones listed by itself it was like in russia and they had it for like wow. 699 bucks or something like that listed Whoa. Um, so I had it in, a, it was in a bundle. It came in with like some precision Dolby, like studio little plug-in thing. And person messaged me like, Hey, I just want the headphones. Will you do 450 for it? And I think it had like 699 for that combo pack listed with best offer on there. 
And I'm like, I'll take that because I know I could get at least a hundred bucks for that other thing as well. And I only put 80 bucks all together in for this um, wow. at the thrift store. So it was, so it was definitely limited. a killer find. Like that store yeah. that day, I think I found like 700 or $800 worth of product there. I found like a Canon A1 that day uh, there. So just like a $200 camera as well. So it's like, it was just a really great day. And uh, even with the limited comps on uh, on eBay, you were still comfortable enough to know that that was going to go for that sort of a price. You weren't sort of perturbed at the, in the sense that there wasn't too many comps. Yeah, I knew the brand. I knew the brand was a good brand. And then there was also one that was listed at the same time that was actually on an auction. And at that time, it was a used one. And I think it was at like 250 with like a day or two left on there. So I'm like, okay, I know I, know I could flip this one pretty quickly since I have a new new version of it uh versus uh the used ones that were out there epic epic you've ha obviously had a monster week um so you, you you're doing very very well and it's the reasons why i wanted to get you on today obviously the dvds ties in very well uh to what mm -hmm. i've uh, done this week and fingers crossed there's a few sales coming through for me but um an absolute wealth of knowledge uh, for sure, as you guys would have seen there with uh, with Steve Sales and uh, obviously his YouTube channel. If you're yet to go on during this video and check out Steve's channel, definitely do so. Steve, I do really appreciate you being here, mate, and, and jumping on. Like I said, you're my first international guest, so I'm, I'm pretty pumped <laughs> about that. And uh, you. you've absolutely nailed that's it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, man. No, that's awesome. Thanks again. And uh, fingers crossed we can get you back on the channel at some point down the line. Oh, definitely. Good stuff. Thanks, mate. So they were our 10 best sold sales items of the week, guys. And didn't Steve have a few absolute beauties? Awesome to get him on the channel. Hope you guys got some value out of that. Let's dive into my finances now. I'll take you through my numbers, pull the table up. I've got 46 sold items this week, which to be honest, it's only 10 a.m. on a Sunday. So I'm anticipating a few more will trickle through. Uh, total revenue, 18, 18.45. So I'm, again, I'm anticipating that will go over the $2,000 mark, which is very, very exciting. Fees, $229. The postage cost, 281. Uh, and my new inventory, I bought $547 worth of goods this week. So it was a, a relatively heavy spend. Uh, $760.64 was the overall cash flow. So um, look, I'm hoping that the cash flow can tick over 800. And considering it has been such a, a heavy week of buying inventory, mainly the DVDs that I've got over here to my left, um, that's pretty much taken up the bulk of the spend. So I'm anticipating with that um, flow on from a lot of uh, listings over the next couple of weeks out of those, I won't be buying too much over the next few weeks. So fingers crossed my cash flow can uh, can slowly increase as well. Um, but look, I'm really happy with how the numbers are sitting out. The sales are continually coming through. Hopefully the sales are coming in for you guys as well. Let me know in the comments below, what was your best sold sales item this week? I always love to hear it. And I appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully you've enjoyed this form of video today with Steve, a slightly longer form of video now on these Sunday shows, but uh, I am enjoying the concept and I'm just gonna keep doing it. So thanks very much for tuning in guys. Give the a quick video a like and uh, go and sub Steve and uh, I'll catch you in the next one.